Dr. Anthony Leiserwitz, the director of the Yale uh, Project on Climate Change in the School of Forestry and Environmental Studies at Yale University. He will provide a brief overview into his recent work at the National and International Public Opinions and Attitudes on Climate Change. He is an expert on American and international public opinion on global warming, including uh, perceptions of, of, of climate change risk and supports and, uh, and opposi uh, oppositions for climate policy and the willingness to take individual behavior change. What I'm going to quickly try to do is describe climate literacy in global perspectives, drawing on findings from the Gallup World Poll, where I'm an advisor um, to the Gallup World Poll. So I'd like to just quickly introduce you to the Gallup World Poll. This is an annual survey conducted in 150 plus countries around the world, representing 95% of the uh, world's population. These are nationally representative samples in both urban and rural areas. Uh, typically, uh, sample size of 1,000. By the way, I'm on slide number one. Uh, it draws on a wide range of questions, a uh, wide range of topics, and is translated into local languages and checked for consistency of meaning across all countries. Next slide, slide number two. Uh, we've managed to get a number of climate change related questions onto this uh, survey, and what I'm going to report about here is four in particular. Uh, public awareness and self-reported knowledge around the world. To what extent people believe that climate change is caused by human or natural factors. How people perceive the risks, so do they see climate change as a personal threat. And to what extent people support more action by their own governments. Next slide. So the fundamental question that I'm going to start with is, how much do you know about global warming or climate change? And people could say, I know a lot, I know something, or I've never heard of it, or I don't know. And for the sake of this, we've basically combined people who said, I've never heard of it, said, I don't know, or refused to answer the question into one category that we're calling the unaware of climate change. And when we calculate that out across the world, we basically find that four out of 10 people around the world, representing about 1.9 billion people, have never heard of this issue. Let me say that again. About four out of 10 people around the world have never heard of this issue. That doesn't mean they haven't seen the impacts in their own lives, but they don't have climate change or global warming as a conceptual framework to make sense of the changes or to understand where those changes may be going. And this is despite decades of increasing in more reliable science. This is despite years of media reporting and the fact that climate change is now at the very highest level of the, uh, the world's political agenda. Even despite that, we still see very large numbers of people around the world who are unaware of this. We've now mapped that on the map that you should see on your screen. And what you see there are the countries in blue are those countries where there's very high awareness, where people generally do know about it. And in, country, in uh, countries that are colored in red and orange, by contrast, are the countries where you see very high levels of unawareness. And what you very quickly can see here is there's a very stark, uh, stark north-south divide. Countries in North America, Europe, Australia, Japan, very high levels of public awareness. In Central and South America, Africa, and South Asia, very high levels of people who are unaware of this issue. Next slide, please. So here we looked at some of the countries where there's the largest number of uh, people who are uh, unaware of this issue. And we divided them into these four quadrants. You see along the left, uh, or the y-axis, the percent of the population in each of these countries that's unaware. And then along the bottom axis, or the x-axis, we see the millions of people that represents in each of these countries. So looking at the lower left, we see that Mexico and Brazil are doing reasonably well compared to most of these others. Uh, Brazil, about 22%. Mexico, about 36 37% are unaware um, of the issue. But let's now contrast that with China. Uh, lower right hand corner. Uh, China is about the same as Mexico, but because China is such an enormous country population wise, we're talking about over 400 million people who've never heard of this issue within China alone. And when we look just above that to India, it's even more stark. 64% uh, of Indians have never heard of this issue, and that represents about 485 million people. Now remember, you know, that's a, a huge numbers of people that's far larger than the pop, entire population of, say, a country like the United States, several United States, in fact. Uh, and these are also countries that are now crucial players in the negotiations, both in the mitigation side and adaptation. And I'll come back to that theme. Uh, in the upper left-hand corner, we see those countries where there are particularly high uh, percentages who have never heard of the issue again. And I'd like to take a closer look, in particular, at Bangladesh. 
Next slide, please. Number five. This is the unaware in Bangladesh. Now, Bangladesh has become kind of an international poster child. Many people think of Bangladesh when they think about the impacts of climate change. And uh, on the left, you see a picture of uh, an analysis uh, produced by the University of Dhaka, which tries to estimate what a 1.5 meter sea level rise might look like. Um, and that's within scientific projections. As you can see, they think that's going to impact about 18 million people, submerge about 22,000 square kilometers of land. Uh, clearly, that's going to have enormous impacts, not just on those people, but those people have to go somewhere, which will have, of course, ripple effects throughout the entire region as they migrate both within country and to other countries. But it's also important to recognize that Bangladesh is also um, uh, vulnerable in another important ways, and that's through fresh water. It's where the Brahmaputra and the Ganges rivers, both glacier-fed uh, rivers that stem in the Himalaya, and we now know that glaciers uh, in the Himalaya are melting away faster than almost anywhere else in the world. So this is a country that's clearly quite vulnerable. Well, how aware of this are they? On the right, we've uh, looked at the data by region, and we see that anywhere from 58 to 74 percent of Bangladeshis have never heard of this issue. Now, again, vulnerability is not simply a function of physical changes in the environment or the human infrastructure that's at risk. It's also about what's in people's heads. And uh, if you don't know you're vulnerable, you are more vulnerable because it makes it impossible for you to start taking the protective actions now to deal with the impacts that are already happening and going to happen in the future. Next slide, please. Uh, this is slide number six. And this is just to represent what we see, of course, around the world. Why are people unaware? Well, largely that's got a lot to do with basic levels of education. Here we look at uh, those Bangladeshis who have uh, only an elementary school education or less, and we find that about 97% of those people have never heard of this issue. By contrast, those Bangladeshis who've had uh, a college education, only about 2% of them have never heard of the issue. So again, climate change is a crucial issue, but it cannot be separated from the larger challenge of sustainable development around the world. Uh, knowledge and understanding and ability to both mitigate and adapt to climate change cannot be separated from the broader need to, uh, of human development, including education of people all over the world. Next slide, please. Slide number seven. Okay, so we then wanted to look, all right, well, of the 60% of people around the world who have heard of climate change, do they understand the causes? So this question asks, Temperature rise is part of global warming or climate change. Do you think rising temperatures are a result of human activities or a result of natural causes? And here, fortunately, we see some good results. 58% uh, of people around the world do believe that it's human activities that are primarily responsible. About 25% say it's natural, 14% volunteer that it's both, and only 3% uh, of those who've heard of climate change say that they don't know. Well, let's take a closer look, however, uh, at the distribution of those people who th still believe that it's naturally caused. Next slide, please. Slide number eight. So in this map, we're mapping where uh, the largest numbers of people are who still believe that climate change is naturally caused. And you can see here the countries in red and in orange are the ones where they're the highest proportions of those people, known in particular the United States and India. Next slide, please. Slide number nine. So here we've taken the 12 uh, major emitters, what we might call the dirty dozen, uh, and we've tried to see, well, how does knowledge about the causes of climate change uh, uh, fall out across these countries? And what you see here in the lower left is that some countries, like Japan, are doing quite well. Only about 6% of Japanese uh, believe that climate change is naturally caused. Uh, Malaysia, Brazil, Mexico, Germany all do quite well on that. Um, but as we keep working our way up, we find that Russia, the UK, and of course the United States, there are still very significant proportions of the population. In the US, it's about 37% who believe that climate change is natural, not a human-caused problem. But when we look over across uh, at the other two countries, China in particular is doing much better on this, interestingly, than the United States. A far lower percentage of their population believes climate change is natural. But again, China is an enormous country, and that still works out to about 230 million people who believe that. And in India, again, is an even higher percentage of about 40% of the country that believes it's natural. And that, again, works out to a very large number of people, of roughly 300 million, basically equivalent to the entire population of the United States. 
Next slide, please. Now, we also wanted to look at how people perceive the risk of climate change. And so this question simply asks, how serious of a threat is global warming to you and your family? And again here, we see that the countries in blue uh, think that uh, it's not a very serious threat to themselves, whereas the countries in red and orange think it's a very significant threat. And we see that, of course, Central and South America uh, see it as a very significant threat, as does Africa and some of South Asia. Um, this sense of perceived threat, of course, has also played an important role in the rich, developed world, the North, uh, the global North, uh, because most people think climate change isn't going to impact them, and thus it's a relatively low priority for many people in the United States, Canada, and Europe compared to other pressing issues. Uh, they haven't yet seen that this is a serious problem for them. It's mostly seen as a distant problem that will affect other people, other places, other species, not us. Next slide, please. Slide number 11. Again, looking at the major emitters, uh, we see a very wide range of responses to this question. Uh, in Brazil, 84% of Brazilians who are aware of climate change, and that's a pretty high percentage in Brazil, 84% uh, of them uh, believe it will be, it presents a, a, a very serious personal threat. Mexico also very high, and India also very high. But then it starts to drop off pretty significantly, and especially when we look at Japan, the United States, the UK, Germany, and Russia, all uh, chiving with what I was just describing about many people in the rich world seeing this as a distant problem that won't impact them. But interestingly is the country on the very end, and that's China. Uh, China, despite being a developing country, and despite being one of the countries that in fact is particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change, many people in China, in fact only 7% of Chinese, uh, view climate change as a very serious threat, suggesting that there's a, a lot of basic uh, climate change understanding that needs to be improved within the Chinese population at large. Next slide, please. We then wanted to look at to what extent people support more action by their various governments. So this question simply asks, do you think the government is doing enough to reduce emissions of gases released by motor vehicles and factories or not? And what we see around the world is that about uh, 62 percent, a clear majority of people around the world say, no, our government needs to do more. Next slide, please, number 13. And when we look at that, those results across the major emitters again, we see that in almost all countries you see a majority of people saying that their own government is not doing enough to reduce emissions. Uh, in Mexico, Russia, Japan, Canada, Indonesia, Brazil, even in the United States and a very healthy plurality in China, all say that our government should be taking much more action to reduce emissions, which is a good sign for the negotiations there in Copenhagen. Next slide, please. So to summarize, um, approximately 40% or roughly 1.9 billion people worldwide are unaware of climate change, and that's often the most vulnerable people. Uh, this is a crucial issue. Uh, both for mitigation reasons, people are unlikely to accept uh, higher prices for carbon-based fuels, as an example, if they don't understand why uh, international treaties are being negotiated, why national legislation is being passed to help reduce carbon emissions. If they don't understand what climate change is, it makes it very difficult for them to, to understand and support those policies. And it's also critical for adaptation. Again, as I said before, if you don't know you're vulnerable, you are more vulnerable. Uh, on the good side, however, of those who are aware, most understand that climate change is in fact caused by human activities, with some notable exceptions in the United States and India in particular. Uh, most around the world perceive climate change as a personal threat. Uh, clearly, the developing countries see it as more of a threat than the developed world, with the notable exception of China. And most countries want their own government to do more to address climate change. Next slide, please. Uh, for more information, you can learn more about this and other studies on, on the fo following websites. Um, and uh, I can come back to the picture. Uh, and so with that, I'd again like to thank uh, Noah for the opportunity to present. Uh, I think this uh, information clearly evidences that there's a critical role for the United Nations and the world as a whole to live out what they agreed to with Article 6 of the original UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is that every country that ratified that treaty, which is international law, to uh, advance public understanding and outreach on climate change around the world. I think it's very clear that we still have a long way to go on that measure, and I look forward to seeing what uh, happens in Copenhagen. Thank you very much.